Hey, Tony Moreland here with Samsung. Super excited about the tutorial today. I'm gonna to teach you guys how to make this really cool space theme watch face, both digital and analog. So let's get started. All right, so we are in Illustrator here. This is where I've created all of my artwork. It's nice to work within Illustrator because since these are vector images, um, you've got some nice controls that you can utilize to create some nice custom artwork. Um, another thing is that it allows me to grab these individual elements and save them as separate PNG files. It's important when you're bringing in the graphics into Galaxy Watch Designer um, as separate PNGs because that allows you to control them separately. And we're gonna do some fun animation tricks in Galaxy Watch Designer. So like this little rocket, we're gonna have some animation happening. We're gonna have some animation happening with the little space alien as well as our background star field. So the way that you take them from Illustrator and into Photoshop to make a PNG is I'm just gonna select one of these elements and use my keyboard command to copy. So it's copied to the computer memory. Now I'm gonna switch over to Photoshop. And when I do the key command for a new document, it automatically sets the pixel dimension crop to that image size of the item that was on the clipboard. So I'm just gonna hit create. Let me make this just a little bit bigger and move them over here. And now when I use the command for paste, which is command V, I will paste in my astronaut and you'll see there he is. Let me enlarge him a bit, just so you can see that's our nice spaceman. So I've already got the spaceman saved here. Actually, I'm showing all of the elements that'll be used in this watch face design. Let me go ahead and close our little spaceman there. Um, notice that the alien and this is the rocket, um, their canvas area is much taller than they would be if I just cropped it to the image size. The reason is, um, since these are gonna be watch hands, that's how I'm gonna animate them in the watch face design. Um, it's nice to work with the exact pixel height of the watch so that, that way I can center the item directly to the middle of the watch face. So the same is with the watch hands. Now I've placed a black background behind those watch hands just so that you can see them. Since they're white, it's a little difficult to see on the uh, that pixelated background. But we've got um, some nice elements to use here. It's kind of hard to tell, but this is a shoe that will be used as the icon for the step counter. This will be the little background circle for that shoe icon. I've got a planet here, I've got a planet down here, an index, and then that star field background. So let's now jump over to Galaxy Watch Designer. And I've got a, a new project here without any layers. Um, so I'm gonna bring in that background of the star field first, but because I want that background to rotate, I'm actually gonna bring it in as a watch hand. So I'm gonna go to watch hand, import image, and I've got my space background here. So I'm just gonna place him into position, perfect. Now, whenever you bring in a watch hand, it defaults to hour in a day, meaning it defaults as an hour hand. I want this to be a seconds hand. So under the rotation properties, sync with, I'm gonna select seconds in minute. And if I click the preview button here in this run window, I will actually see my watch hand of a star field rotating. A couple of things about that though that I wanna change is I don't really want that ticking motion. So I'm gonna go down to movement effect and I'm gonna select sweep. That way I've got this nice rotating star field. But to add some nice dynamics to this watch face, I want it to actually rotate backwards. So under direction, rather than CW, which stands for clockwise, I'm gonna select counterclockwise. Okay, now I've got my star field rotating backwards. I'm gonna turn off that preview just so that he's not annoying off on the side there. Um, now let's bring in the index. So I'm gonna go down to my image here and I'm gonna select my index. Here we go. Notice my index did not center nicely into that workspace. I'm just gonna, with that selected, come up to this tool here, which is just center aligned, so it aligned it perfectly right in the center. Now let's bring in another image. Let's gonna bring in the big planet. Okay, so I'm gonna click, drag him into position. I think he was right about like that, but I want the planet to appear behind the index. 
I can either grab the planet and I can drag it below the index, or I can use the arrow keys down here to move one layer down, or I can also come up to here. You can see we've got some tools here that are send to back, bring to front. This one is just one layer sending it to back, so it goes backwards one layer. Perfect, okay. So now let's bring in our spaceman. Here we go. Okay, our spaceman is a little big. So there's two ways that I can reduce the size. I can grab the corner and I can rotate him. Without holding the shift button down though, you can see I can contort and distort that image. And that's not what I wanna do. So I would hold down the shift button and rotate him smaller. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another way is to come over here under dimensions and change the pixel width and height. I'm gonna click the lock icon there so that that way they change proportionately. Let's change the width from 94 down to 70. That looks pretty good. All right, let me kind of position him something like that there. Perfect, now it's always good to save your document as you're working on it, so I'm just gonna hit the save command there. All this notices is saying that any new document that I'm saving as a version 1.6 or later cannot be opened in an older version of Galaxy Watch Designer. So just saying yes to that. All right, so now let's bring in some watch hands. So I'm gonna collect the watch hand component there. I'm gonna import an image rather than use one of the default ones here. Import image, and I'm gonna look for my hour hand. And I placed all of my watch hands in another subfolder called hands, and I'm looking for my hour PNG, perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna center them to the space by hitting that button there. And as I had mentioned earlier, because my document was the full height, um, when I hit that center button, it's gonna pivot right off of that perfect center right there. So let's bring in the minute hand. Okay, I'm gonna center it. Now when you bring in watch hands, as I had mentioned, they always default to hour and day. So because I want this minute hand to sync with minutes, I'm gonna select the hour and day menu there and change it to minutes and hours. And you can see over here in my preview area, it's actually telling me the current time. Let's bring in a seconds hand. Okay, again, I'm gonna center it to the stage and I'm gonna sync with seconds and minutes. Perfect, if I hit the run in the preview, I'm getting some nice ticking motion with that seconds hand. I've got my star field rotating in the back. It's pretty nice. Okay, now let's bring in another planet just to kind of finish off our star field background. He's a little big. I'm gonna just hold the shift button down as I reduce the size. I'm gonna position him here. And I want that planet to appear behind the index. So I'm gonna grab him and just bring him down to here. Perfect, he's behind our index now. Okay, now we're gonna have some fun with some animation. Again, using the watch hands to import an image, let's bring in our rocket. Okay, I'm gonna center him to stage. He's gonna pivot straight off of that center point there. I'm gonna change it to be seconds and minute. I'm gonna change the movement effect to sweep. And it, hit the play button. So, pretty nice, but there's one more adjustment I wanna do. If you notice, the rocket is just in front of that second hand, and that's just a little bit annoying. So, I'm gonna come over here to my workspace. I'm gonna select the rocket, and this little tool, uh, this little anchor point up at the top here is for rotating. So I'm gonna bring him behind the watch hand of the seconds there. So let's take a look now. Now he's kind of like trailing the uh, the seconds hand. I like that. Okay, and let's do the same for our little space alien. Okay, I've got my space alien here. I'm gonna center him to the stage. Um, uh, I'm gonna rotate him so that He's a little bit different from the others that are rotating. I'm going to set his movement to sweep. Whoops, first I have to set it to seconds and minutes. 
Now I can set it to sweep, and I'm going to have him rotating backwards. And I would like him to appear behind the planets, basically just in front of that star field, so that sometimes he appears and sometimes he doesn't. So I'm going to keep hitting this arrow button until he goes to the back. All righty, so just above the uh, star field. Now, another thing that I think would be fun with this is to actually have his pivot point be different so that he's just not rotating with that star field. So I'm just going to grab the alien. Oops, so you can see I grabbed the rocket there. So I'm going to go Command-Z, bring him back. I'm going to go up to that rocket layer, and I'm going to lock it. Okay. And the same with our spaceman until I know that I am grabbing just the alien. There we go. Okay. So if I reposition the space alien to this location here, you will see sometimes he will appear and sometimes he won't. So let's just go like that and we can see in our little preview menu here. I'm sorry, you can see in our little preview window here. We've got a nice animation of the rocket, the space alien, and the watch hands. All right, so let's do some colorization. Um, I'd like to add a little bit of color to this, uh, to this design. So let me turn off these locked layers. Um, first, let's mess with the, um, the index. So I'm going to, with the layer selected for the index, I'm going to hit Adjust Color and change the hue. But you'll notice when I change the hue, because that index is white, nothing changes. So I actually have to increase the saturation. Now when I go and rotate the hue slider, you can see my colors are changing. So let's look for something in that sort of purple tone. There we go. Kind of matching the, uh, the face of the astronaut. Take out some of that saturation, make it a little darker. Yeah, something like that would work. Okay, now let's add a little color to our watch hand. So I'm gonna go to the hour hand, come down to just color, add some saturation so that I know it'll control the color and Let's try and find, a, I'm gonna go with something that's like a blue. There we go, that blue, where was that? I'm looking for a blue that's gonna match the space alien. There we go. Okay, take some of that saturation out. Let's make it a little bit darker. Okay, that's close enough. So we're looking at uh, 180 on the hue, 68 on the saturation, and 14, negative 14 on the lightness. So 180, 68, and minus 14. Okay, now to change the hour hand, I'm going to use those same settings. So come over here to adjust color, and let's put that hue up to 180. Our saturation was at 68. And our lightness was at minus 14. Perfect. Okay, now lastly, let's change our seconds hand. I'm going to find something that complements it well. Increase our saturation. I'm going to go, we don't want to get too many colors uh, in this design, so I'm actually going to take all the color out of it and just make it a gray. So something like that would work well. Okay, lastly, I would like to add in a step counter. So the first thing I'm going to do is create that step counter icon. Um, so I'm going to bring in a circle. Now there are no 
tools within Galaxy Watch Designer to draw shapes. So any sort of shape that you see, you actually have to bring in as a PNG. So I've got a circle PNG that is just white. And I'm going to hold down an anchor point here, make this circle smaller. I'm going to position him right about there. I'm just using the arrow keys to just fine tune the positioning. Um, I would like that color to be a gray and not so bright with the with that white. And that way it kind of matches that second sand. And then let me bring in that shoe icon that I was using for the step counter. Okay. So it's a little big. I'm going to use the dimension under the properties menu here to change that. Let's set that to... That's 20 pixels. That looks a little too small. Let's try 35. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to just use my arrow keys to do some fine adjustments of it. Um, I would actually like this icon to be black. So I'm adjusting the color, and all I did was just bring the lightness down to black. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now let's bring in a step counter. So you do that under the components sidebar here under the text menu, and I'm gonna select step counts. Perfect. I'm gonna drag this into position. Now, if you notice, it actually has the word steps, and I don't want that to appear there. You know, the icon is enough to say that this is a step counter. So under the data menu here in the properties window, I am going to change the display type to be just the percent symbol and the letter D. That is just the numeric value. I'm also going to change the alignment to align left. That way, you know, smaller digits will appear right next to the icon. And as the, uh, the series of numbers grows, it will just grow to the right. So color of the font, I'm going to change that from a white to a gray. Let's go with that. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger in a font size. So from 22, let's just try 24. Now, another thing I would like to do is actually change the font. Right now, the font is set to sync to device. So that's just a, a basic font, whatever your default font is that the user has. It's the font that it'll use. But I want to bring in a custom font. So I can select from a number of fonts that come pre-installed with Galaxy Watch Designer, but I want to add a font. So select Add Font, and I have a font already in mind. So let me place that. Now, notice that my font didn't change yet. All I've done is I've added the font to this document of Galaxy Watch Designer. Galaxy Watch Designer does not remember what fonts you've added from previous projects. So every project, you have to add the fonts individually at that time. So now I can come back down to here and I can select the font that I added. And let me go ahead and make that a bigger font size. There we go. Now I can test out the, uh, the step counter digits by coming over to the health tab and I can just type in a large number. So there we go, 3,567 steps. Nice. So that is our watch face for a space theme. Um, whenever you're creating a watch face, you also have to turn it into what's called an AOD version. That stands for always on display. Think of it, as sleep mode. So when you've got your watch and it's tilted away from your vision, it can go into a sleep mode, which is a, a streamlined version of your watch face. So we're gonna do a couple things to make a streamlined version of our watch face here. First, I'm gonna save the project. Okay. All right, to create the always on display version of your watch face, we're gonna actually add another instance of this entire watch face. All of the layers will be duplicated, and on that instance, we'll be able to remove some of these layers so that we can have less color showing. So to create the always on display version, I'm gonna hit this icon in the upper right corner, and I get this warning that pops up, and it tells me that my on pixel ratio is too high. That means that 
the amount of pixels that are turned on to show this watch face, it's too high. I'm going to need to reduce that down to below than 15%. And if you notice down here, it tells me that it's at 20.4%. So that is my goal is to get that down below 15. So the way you do that is just by removing some layers. So we're gonna simplify this watch face. This is the always on display instance of our watch face. If we ever wanna go back to the original one, just click this button in the upper right corner and now we're viewing the actual watch face. So think of it as almost two different projects. I'm gonna click this to activate our always on display. That warning will go away once we get below 15%. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this planet. So I selected that planet, I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna delete that layer and look at automatically our on pixel ratio has drop below 15%. But I still wanna do a few other things to help simplify this. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the spaceman and I'm gonna get rid of this planet. And we don't need the step counter. Again, this is the version of the watch face that someone would see for a brief moment as they're rotating the watch towards themselves before it activates to the actual watch face. So really, we just want a simplified version of the watch face. To view this always on display in our preview window, we just hit this button right here. So this is what the watch face will look like when the watch is turned away. And this is what the watch will look like when the watch has been rotated towards a person. Excellent. So another feature within this run window that I'll just share with you is this button here. What this does is it takes your watch face and puts it onto an actual watch. Now I can change different watch bands. I can also select from a library of Galaxy watches. Um, let's go with what that rose gold, there we go. So it's a real fun way to see what your watch face would look like on different watches. You can also click this button here to take a photograph of your image, um, it will save it as a PNG file on your computer. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go back to viewing our actual watch face. Let's go check our always on display, it looks nice, excellent. Perfect, okay. So this project is done for our analog watch face, so now let's make a digital version of this watch face. So all I'm gonna do first is just save this document as a digital version. Perfect, okay. So let's delete a few of these layers that we know we're not going to use. And that would be the actual watch hand. So I'm just gonna select the hand for seconds, the hand for minutes, and the hand for the hours. Um, and if you remember on that AOD version, we've got uh, some watch hands over there. So now I've selected that over and I can remove those elements. We also are not gonna need our index. So now let me click back and remove our index. Okay, so this is a great starting point for our digital watch. We're now gonna bring in a digital clock. So I've just selected the digital clock button in the component bar. Let me reposition this a bit. Now our digital clock shows hours, minutes, and seconds. And we don't want it to show all of that. I wanna have an area for the hours that is bigger than the area for the minute. So I'm actually gonna have two digital clocks. So for this one here, this will be just our hours. So I'm gonna come over here to ICU format and I'm gonna delete the two S's, that's for the seconds. Get rid of the colon, delete the two M's as well as that colon. And then that leaves me with just the hours. Let me preview that and we can see we've got our hours there. Now, one thing to note, the digital clock 
comes in defaulted as a 24 hour clock. So if I come over here to my watch tab and I change the time, you will see that it continues up beyond 12 o'clock. I want this to be a 12 hour digital clock. So I'm actually gonna change the ICU format to just a lowercase set of H's. Perfect. Now, because I have two H's here, it shows two digits for even a uh, single hour. If I wanted that to show just the single digit, I would just put one H. And even though the hour time would go up to a double digit when you're looking at 10, 11, and 12, um, it'll still display. But in this case, because I want it to feel like a space themed digital clock, I'm gonna go with two lowercase h's. And now let's change the font size for that hour. Let's come up with a nice big number and I'd like to change the font itself. So from sync to device, I'm gonna to come to here and in the earlier project, we had installed that Larrabee font. So I'm gonna use that and we're gonna make that hour even bigger. So I'm gonna come over here and just highlight that field. Let's try 120. Okay, that's pretty nice. And then let's give that font a color. So I'm gonna just click in this box here. I could put in the, uh, the hex code, but I'm just gonna use my color picker to come up with a nice purple. Um, Something like, something like, let's see here. There we go. That looks pretty nice. Perfect. Okay. I'm just going to say okay to that. So that's showing our hours. And then I want to um, now show the minutes. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm just going to go copy paste and it makes a second version of that digital clock i'm going to reposition it down to here i'm going to change the font size to be much smaller that's a bit too small let's go with how about we go with uh 76 nice okay and i'm going to position that digital clock to be right at the same height as the hour clock. And you notice I have to change the ICU format because currently it's showing hours. So I'm going to change that to two M's and now it's showing my minutes. And then one thing I want to do because the, when, when numbers are changing, their alignments change. Sometimes numbers are skinnier, sometimes they are wider. So I'm going to left justify my minutes. Okay, and then I'm gonna do just the opposite for my hours. I'm gonna right justify it. What that does is that will always align my the space for my hours uh, to be nice and tight with the space for my minutes. So this area right in here will always maintain as our time is changing. You can see as I cycle through that. That just helps with positioning and, and numbers not just bouncing around your, your workspace. Um, okay, I'm gonna hit save on that. And then um, for our AOD version, if you remember, I had removed all of those uh, elements from the AOD. So our AOD doesn't have anything. So um, let's go like this. We're gonna completely remove the AOD state. So I'm clicking on the arrow and I'm gonna select remove always on state. Okay, I'll just say yes to this. So at this moment, I don't have an AOD version of this watch face. So I'm gonna click that button again. It's just created it. There we go. I'll say okay to this. And you can see my on pixel ratio is above 15. Um, so let's do a couple things. One is let's get rid of that step counter. We don't need that on the AOD version. I'm gonna get rid of this planet here. We're getting close. Whoops, I accidentally deleted the minutes. Let me lock the minute layers and the hour layers. Um, I'm gonna take this planet and drop him down. Let's see what this does. 
Hey, look at that. We're getting below our 15. I'm going to go ahead and delete that planet. Now I'm going to reposition the hours. I'm just dragging over both of them. You actually have to drag over the entire anchor points of the uh, file layer there. I'm just using my arrow keys to reposition him to be right nice and in the center. Okay, so now when I preview our AOD, we're at 12% on the on pixel ratio, and we've got a nice fun AOD version of our watch face. Um, I can click this to go back to the original timeline, or I can click this to see the preview of it. Excellent, so that is our digital version of our space watch theme. All right, hope you enjoyed our tutorial on our fun space theme watch face. If you have any questions, head over to our website, developer.samsung.com. You can check out our FAQ, post questions on our form, or even submit a support request. All right, hope you enjoyed, thanks.